Uh, but my actual question, which is sort of a comment, which you can then respond to or continuation of uh, an earlier discussion, but something I thought I just want to say out loud and get some feedback on is, you know, Deborah and Dan, uh, you expressed that, you know, frustration about penetrating the culture and, uh, and spreading the ideas. And you're on one of your conclusions was that we first we need a moral uh, revolution a replacement of the, you know, the code of morality before we can really see those changes. And uh, in, in my own you know, awakening, when I read Atlas Shrugged uh, 10 years ago, and probably like a lot of people, I thought, wow, I'm hearing somebody else say out loud, everything which I instinctively or subconsciously already thought and believed and like, here it is, game over, like, this is, you know, the answer is right here. And then I was curious, like, what would a person be like who read this and rejected it? And, and I expected maybe to just hear some emotional reasons, um, but I couldn't really anticipate hearing things based on, on logic. And some of the things I ran into were things like, well, that's true for you, but something different is true for me. And then in, I go metaphysical. So for me, one plus one equals two, but for someone else, one plus one equals three. Uh, and another thing I heard was, um, well, you, you know, you know, think you're more, you have a very analytical personality. I know things instinctively or, you know, through my intuition and then boom, that's epistemology. So, um, and those two things you know, feed into ethics and morality. And there's not, those aren't flashy topics, metaphysics and epistemology. The average person probably doesn't even have a solid working definition of of what those terms are. And it's hard to get harder to get people excited about those. So if you go into, uh, you know, if you have a flawed, just kind of vague idea of those two things that you just got through osmosis, you know, through the culture and we're never really, they're not deliberate, you know, uh, answers that you've arrived to on your own, then how do you even go into the business of a moral code if you ha don't have that foundation at all? So, yeah, I mean, clearly, if somebody really has bought into one plus one equals whatever, I feel like, and there's no objective reality, and there's no objective truth, it's going to be almost impossible to talk to them about pretty much anything. Most people don't really hold that. They use that as a rationalization when they don't want to do something, like take Atlas Shrugged seriously. I don't think it's why they reject Atlas Shrugged. I think it's why they explain to themselves why they reject Atlas Shrugged. They reject Atlas Shrugged for emotional self-esteem, um, uh, you know, altruistic reasons, but they can't really comprehend any of those. And they would be too destructive to self for them to comprehend them. So they make up, if you will, they borrow from the, 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 the environment. Oh, anything goes one plus one equals three, the metaphysics. And I don't think you can change that attitude, the one plus one equals whatever I feel like, by teaching them epistemology. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is that it's, they've, they're evading because one plus one does not equal whatever they feel like. And they know it, but they're evading that fact. So there's something about, it's not a lack of knowledge. It's, a, um, it's an evasion. It's a lack of thinking. It's a lack of respect for their own mind. It's a lack of respect for reality. And the culture supports that. That's the evil that's going on in the world right now. The culture supports that. The culture encourages that. The culture promotes that. So it makes it okay for them to say these ridiculously stupid things, right? Um, whereas a healthy culture would say, no, I mean, go back and think, right? That you don't, you don't have to teach them epistemology. You don't know one plus one equals two, right? Just go back and, and look at your fingers for a little while. Just contemplate your fingers, right? Um, and so it gets worse and worse and worse because the culture reinforces their evasions. And, and the intellectuals promote their evasions. Uh, so yes, we need a culture in which the right epistemology and metaphysics are taught, um, particularly the right epistemology, because the right metaphysics is, metaphysics primarily is self-evident axioms. Uh, that if not, if people don't know reality, ex existence exists and they don't know anything. And, and so it's, it's it, but we need to teach them how to think 
but not at the level one plus one equals two. They, they should know that. That's, that's kindergarten stuff. But a culture that promotes that hoods them. Yeah. Yeah, I want to agree, but doesn't Ayn Rand's, you know, thing about Kant being the dominant philosopher, you know, he did not acknowledge those axioms that are self-evident, and that's kind of a circular definition of axioms being self-evident, but, but if he is the dominant philosopher, even if people aren't consciously aware of it in, in today's environment and through the 20th century, then that's kind of how we have that ba mental foundation that's just, you know, built on sand. Absolutely. So, Okay, so there are two levels at which this needs to happen, right? There's the level of the intellectuals, the philosophers, the academics, the intellectuals more broadly. Those guys need to know epistemology. They need to study it, they need to figure it out, and they need to apply it constantly, and we need to change the universities in terms of the epistemology they have. The average person does not need to learn epistemology, and we should not be teaching them epistemology. We should just be teaching them math and science and not giving them the excuse. What the average person needs is morality. What they need is ethics, right? But we need to change the intellectual environment. So when an average person wants to evade by saying, yeah, one plus one, who cares? Somebody slaps him, right, intellectually. Uh, you want to have the people... Um, the people like me, right? The, the public intellectuals exhibiting a rational epistemology, not teaching a rational epistemology. And the people above me and the hierarchy of, of intellectuals, right? Knowing that epistemology and teaching it so that there's a constant flow so it's in the air, right? But so people get a rational epistemology not by studying it, but by studying rational fields rationally. So we need educators teaching based on a rational epistemology. That's how Kant did it. It's not like people read Kant. It's the philosophers read Kant and that perpetuated this into the culture in subtle ways. But morality can be, morality is at the level where everybody can actually get it and, and needs to be explained. Now, basic epistemology like one plus one equals two, everybody should get. And the fact that they're not getting it is just means that they've got, there's some corrupt intellectuals giving them the freedom not to get it. Freedom's not the right word, but the license not to get it. Does that make sense? It does. And in terms of the public intellectuals, that reminds me of the, they're, you know, a hero to model that behavior. It's just like there are no heroes in, uh, you know, on Netflix shows or series or movies or just outside the novels of Ayn Rand to find uh, in the form of art something to model uh, oneself after or display these, these virtues. Um, you know, it's just, I just don't see it. Yep. It's very rare. I mean, there are TV shows with heroes, but it is rare. It is rare. And, and um, they're not the ones that get all the critical acclaim. There's Mr. Sunshine, um, I, my, my favorite TV show. Um, Debra. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. 
it's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>